right now on Pulse. <laughs> Big things to come after the break. Kevin Pereira is here, and he'll give us an in-depth look at BBS software. It's kind of like the internet, but uh, completely different. Before there were chat rooms and instant messages, there were bulletin board systems. Back in the early to mid-80s, this was how nerds united across the country. Now, Kevin Pereira met an extremely passionate fan in Massachusetts who's creating what he hopes will be the worst BBS documentary ever. Now, it may be hard to imagine, but believe it or not, there was a time before the Internet existed. It was a time where ideas and information were exchanged locally instead of globally. It was the golden age of the bulletin board system, and it's a time that documentarian Jason Scott wants to tell you all about. I've always been kind of into computers. Uh, when I was eight years old, my father brought home a uh, Commodore PET for me and I still have it. When I was about 11, one of my friends introduced me to uh, dial-up bulletin board systems. When people had home computers in the 80s, they could buy a modem and use that modem to hook up to other people's computers. Uh, later, people figured out how to leave files, uh, send files and leave them for other people to pick up. Anybody could post, except that only one person could use it at a time. So people would have to wait for one person to finish and then they could connect in and because of that the conversations were much slower and when you got on um, you really focused what you were going to write because you were only given a, a small period of time to do it you know BBS lists used to be the way you knew about a bulletin board and that list would tell you every other board that was connected uh, or online I had thousands of these things so I started correlating them and coming up with the all-time BBS list this also got the interest of people. So people started writing me, but they didn't just write me like thanks or wow. They started writing me, finally someone understands my childhood. They understand my early adulthood. And I realized there was a story to be told there that wasn't being told. So that's when I, I registered bbsdocumentary.com, started collecting information on them, and said, hey, I'm going to make a movie. I'll shoot on and off for a year, maybe do a little editing for six months, and I'll be done, and it'll be great, and people will be happy. And it's turned into three years of filming, which has finished. I have traveled to 20 states. I have been to uh, everything from high-rises to trailers. And some of the people there gave me the most interesting stories. There was a real piece of their lives put into it, and that's what came out. After a while, you realized it wasn't about the hardware, it wasn't about the software, it wasn't about the, the wires and the mechanics, it was about the people, the relationships they made. Uh, I had people who uh, got almost sad and uh, on the edge of tears talking about people who they no longer knew. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a people story. It's really about these people who used these machines back then to express themselves. Uh, I've said to people that I hope that my documentary is the worst documentary ever made about bulletin board systems and that the documentaries that are to come that will use my research and maybe add their own will tell the story even better. All right, we're joined now by Kevin Pereira. Kevin, tell me, I mean, who would, I don't want to say waste, but who would use their phone line and computer for it? Uh, yeah, right here, right here. <laughs> yeah. I was the, uh, the sysop of a fully registered WWIV board called The Threshold. Dual node, you know, little simple operation. Oh, my. Yeah. It looked like he had a lot of tapes. I mean, is this going to be a 40-hour documentary? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, he shot a ton of stuff, but he's, he's really got a great idea. He's going to release it on DVD as like a seven-part series. So uh -huh. that way, if, if you're not interested in door games and, and why they were important, you could go and watch perhaps the history of Fidonet. Doesn't that mm, sound interesting? That does. You know, I bet you'll be Make some kettle corn and get comfy on the couch on a Saturday night. Yeah, it sounds like a date. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. <laughs>